Warning and disclaimer please listen to this before you proceed any further. This is rated mature because of near sex scenes. There will not be actual sex in the story just mentions of its scenes that borderline it, explicit degrading language. I do not see the characters like this they are only written to be as such. I do not romanticize abusive relationships. Lef will not stay in a relationship with Yaku, and Yaku is indeed abusive. I am a sucker for angst but this part will not have as much as the second part. All of the important characters will develop and more will appear in part 2. There will be 2 to 3 parts to this series. With that being said, you can find the summary in the description. So enjoy. Lef is a very emotionally verbal person when he disliked or favored something he took it upon himself to express it. He grew up in a very loving two-family home. Him and his sister. His parents were never really around his mother is a nationally idolized model and his father is a business CEO. The time they spent with their kids was small but very loving. Even though it was painfully obvious that they were only together by name. Their love for each other faded with the affairs and distance. Even Lef himself noticed their indifference for each other and he usually has a hard time picking up stuff like that. Back to him being a very expressive person. He found it hard to do so when around his team. He couldn't be too loud but had to be vocal, couldn't get ahead of himself but had to be ambitious. Lef knew he wasn't that much of a lovable or in that matter a likable person. He learned that in junior high, being called freaked became a norm during his middle school days. He has been called out for being too tall to be skinny, too pale to be pretty and too pretty to be boyfriend material. He wasn't good at any sport. He switched clubs like he wore clothes. If not, he just got kicked off. High school was a page turner joining the volleyball team was supposed to make a change in his life. But if anything, days only got worse. Volleyball became one of his favorite sports the feeling of a ball hitting the palm of his hand gave him a sense of security it calmed him down. But he didn't have that many natural reflexes and wasn't a natural at all. And one of the things he hated the most was being yelled at. The first time Yaku yelled at him he almost had a full out panic attack. But it went unnoticed and he just got used to the yelling, he just pushes it off with a smile or a few awkward gestures. His teammates didn't care enough to look into it. Wish in hindsight is a sad thing. Even when he finally thought he made friends with his teammates he was wrong. He got added to a big group chat that is dedicated to volleyball even though they barely talked about the subject. Being added by Yaku, who made sure to tell him he added him because it was a requirement. In the group chat, he was sure that he'd make friends, because of the sheer number alone and statistics, he should have made at least one new friend. There was Hineda who was simply nice to everyone outside of his. Weird mood swings and Oikawa who made a note of adding everyone at least once in his pranks. And he was added to a bottoms group chat due to his vulnerable personality and skinny body structure even though he didn't get why it was even a thing. Bed position should stay private and their high school kids. The group chat was very eventful even though he sometimes gets forgotten they grew closer. Less than friends but closer than strangers and Kenma still disliked him. That's a given, why'd he'd think they'd suddenly become friends. Then there was his relationship with Yaku. When he finally grew the balls to ask him out with the help of the bottoms group chat Yaku said yes. In a very rude and degrading way but he said yes. He was about to be kicked out of the bottom group chat but wasn't. Because his position in bed was of such. Sex wasn't that delightful it was a wonky first time he somewhat wants back. But he is a high school kid and it is his first. So, it should get better. It got better but Yaka got more violent and Lef didn't think he could leave him he doesn't think he has the means to do so. Who else would there be? Who else would be willing to date him? To love him in such. A way. Present day in Bad Bitch Bottoms group chat. Let's do another prank. A prank? What kind, bestie? Cheating on your boyfriend challenge. Y'all on some real clown shit. Didn't we do this before? I think that was the breakup challenge. This is why I don't join in y'all bitches dumb as fuck. I know, that last prank almost ended my whole relationship I'm out of this one. I'm definitely in. Our. Relationship needs some kind of spice so I am too. Like hell this shit is stupid. Yours truly is in so how are we bout to do this? So do the prank however you see fit but recording it and screenshots are a must bobs. So? who's first. A week later, Bokuto cried, why is that so sweet? I ended up doing it in the end with no recording though because I didn't think I do it for real. That explains a lot. Like you being clingy. And Inishita-senpai being much more overprotective of you. Yeah, 
I nearly cried cause he was like I knew it would come to this you were too good for someone like me. Like bitch I don't know how you think I have the actual means to cheat on you. Like did you see my ugly ass how did you believe me? I'm the one who was suspecting the inevitable like how did you fall for? Me? I guess it's true that love filters your sight. Because I'm not exactly good looking. He's the one that's too good for me. Bro you cutting yourself short. Not my type but you're hot as shit in your own way so own it. Isn't it adorable both think they are too good for each other? That's just perfect. Let's just pretend it wasn't my turn to have my relationship adored and envied. And move on. Who's next? I think it left. Turn. Oh, yeah nearly forgot. Oh, yeah but how I'm supposed to do it? I'm drawing a blank. Kenma and Shibayama on your team can help. No, I'm not. What use will I be? We help each other so yes you will. Fine. Lev clenched his phone a bit too tightly in a way that made his fingers hurt a bit. Was this a good idea? He did want Yako to promise to pay more attention to his. Like Ushijima and Tendu. Ushijima wasn't even like Yako though. Ushijima just tended to prioritize volleyball. Maybe like Inishida and Tanaka who believed neither deserved one another. But Lef was sure Yaku didn't feel that way, and why would he? Lef was the lucky one Yaku was just nice to say yes to his confession he wouldn't even think twice if Yaku just suddenly broke up with him even without giving a real explanation. Or cheated on him he believed he didn't deserve Yaku. Even though that's beyond bullshit. No matter, this might strengthen his relationship with Kenma. The possibility of them becoming friends fueled his need to do this prank. That and Yako liking him more. It wasn't like anybody broke up doing this prank. But there were the few who didn't even do it yet like Kenma. Sugawara, and Suna. His phone dung again, and Lef easily figured it was a message from Kenma or Shibayama if not both. Club room, ASAP. I scheduled a meeting with Yako there to talk about extra receiving practice for me. But Kenma is there to position you to do the prank. No real cheating of course. Shibayama quickly informed him after Kenma's vague text. Thank. Or welcome. Lef looked down at his. Lunch with a pout being unable to finish it but he had a relationship bonding session with Kenma. So, he threw it away. Yaku said he should eat less growing too big as is. He piped down on how much he ate throwing the rest away will only help if anything. He got a few curious stares from his classmates who usually eat in class with him. Not friends but they are used to each other habits and enjoy each other presence. Lef never threw away his food and he has been cutting back on how much he brought for lunch. Oh, and then there was Inuka his actual friend who sat with him to eat. Inuka was getting a bit worried. Lef is that all you going to eat why are you in a rush, my baby cousin even eats more than that. Inuka asked the question the other students were wondering. Everyone in the class took their time away from their small conversations to eavesdrop. Oh. I didn't notice. No need to worry I just started to get a small appetite. And well I ate a lot for breakfast this morning. Lef lied. It seemed to do for the rest of the class but Inuka knew he was lying he saw Lef in the back of the gym eating a small breakfast because he was late. His breakfast was only toast with jelly on it and a small kid's juice. That was anything but a big breakfast. Inuka knew this much but didn't know how to address it especially in front of his classmates who decided to stay in the room to eat. Lef finally slipped away to the volleyball team's club room upon entering he saw Kenma sitting in a chair playing his game lunch half-eaten. I should have brought my lunch with me, Lef thought, feeling his stomach give a quiet rumble. Stand in front of me, Kenma said Lef did so making sure to position his phone discreetly on the bookshelf. So, the camera can get a full view of the room without being spotted. You going to have to edit the video if you record it that far away, on top of editing out long pauses and 18 plus scenes. Kenma warned nonchalantly, but Lev didn't know where else to put it so he only nodded his head in understanding. He stood in front of Kenma as told he noticed the scrunching up of Kenma's noise as the seconds passed. Kenma suddenly got a ding on his phone. Towering over him Lev saw the message. Yako is 5 seconds away. Do the most incriminating pose you can think of without actually doing anything. Without a second to waste Kenma showed his phone to the camera. Both of them heard Yaku's footsteps so Kenma turned off his phone and sat it on the table. I'm not bottoming you even if this is fake that be a new low for me, so bend over. Taking too long to fully register what Kenma said, Kenma took it upon himself to do so. He swiftly turned Lef around so he was facing the door, pushing him down so he could be bent at the knee. Lef was 
so startled he nearly lost footing. When he finally understood what Kenma was doing he felt his pants getting pulled down so he went along with it. Ignoring the feeling of air on his bare ass meaning his underwear was down to. Kenma unbuckled his pants and positioned himself behind him without being too close. Hearing the footsteps pause in front of the door, Lef made a sudden decision to grab. Kenma's water bottle and splash. Water on his face to look like he was sweating. It was a little too much but looks believable. Kenma did the same grabbing the bottle out of Lef's hand. Lef felt the water Kenma splashed on his face drip onto his back causing him to shiver his school shirt was slightly lifted exposing his lower back. Kenma closed the bottle putting it to the side. Then he begrudgingly placed his hand on Lef's hip. And got a hold of his silver hair pulling it back causing Lef to wince. They heard no sign of Yaku entering the door. There was another ding from Kenma's phone. Kenma glanced at his phone screen not being turned off. So Kenma read it out loud for both Lef and the camera to hear. Yaku is waiting for me outside of the door. Make some kind of loud noise to get his attention. From Shibayama. Leviticus. Kenma demanded not giving any extra input after. Lef knew Kenma wanted him to make a noise. A moan to be exact. Lef took a minute to think of the right sound so in the middle of his fake moan Kenma decided to yank his hair, not thinking he'd say anything. So Kenma wanted to make him his voice rose a bit while he let out the fake moan making it sound somewhat real. Ah, MMH. Moan my name. Kenma whispered knowing Yaku wouldn't walk into the room thinking there was a random couple having sex. He made sure to yank Lef's hair when he started his sentence to get the full effect again. K Kenma MMH. That hurts. Lef winced rubbing his head the last sentence came out as a whimper. Kenma heard a shuffle from outside the door. It had to be Yaku putting his ear against the door. He had to do something to get Yaku to open the door on his own. Lef don't be too loud. He said making sure to sound like he was catching his breath. His voice is vocal but not loud. The doorknob was heard moving the two boys knew that Yaku finally heard them. Lef felt Kenma move back a bit. But not too much, so the position still looks like Kenma was inside of him. Roll your hips. Kenma said in a whisper so that only Lef can hear him and think of something dirty. Kenma quickly added on and Lef realized his dick was hanging out for Yako to see. Lef nodded his head face flushing as a dirty thought came to mind. Lef ride me. He remembered last week with Yaku. Lef's face turned a new shade of red and his lower regions immediately went up. He needs to remember to censor some of this Kenma. Probably didn't see his dick but the camera sure did. After a long angry fit of a moving doorknob, the door finally slammed open. The viewers were presented with a flushed soaking Lef being fucked by Kenma who was also blushing from memory while being soaked. Lef rolled his hips not against Kenma but the air between them, but from Yaku's point of view, it looked like he was moving himself on end. Off of Kenma. Kenma's hand stayed firmly in Lef's silver hair his eyes drawn on Lef's backside to make himself look turned on. Gripping the male's waist tight enough to leave a mark. Lef gasped out looking up to lock eyes with Yaku and Kuro who eyes were wide. Kenma looked at his phone missing a message Shibayama sent. Kuru came along because he had the keys. I just saw him walking there so Yaku. We'll be outside the door for a while. This can be your prank to Kenma, two in one. Kenma looked up at the two. Yaku froze upon actually seeing it Lef only wiped the water off his forehead in pure embarrassment. Then suddenly everything went deadly quiet. Kenma. Kuru question in disbelief while Yaku's face darkened. What in the hell? Lef visible. Lef was a reasonable person when he picks and chooses what to fear. Like people a whole foot taller than him. He considers that as something very unnatural. Someone being taller than him is okay, it makes him feel normal and immediately comfortable around them, but someone a whole foot taller is very scary. That was one of his biggest fears that level with his angry sister and his parents never. Coming home. Well, his parents never coming home being his top fear. Something he also sat right behind his missing parents as a fear, is a pissed Yaku. Yaku is normally always angry, it's just part of his vibrant personality, and, Lef believes it is compensation for Yaku's short height. But that is beside the point. Yaku was currently pissed Lef only saw Yaku like this when he heard that. Yamamoto's little sister was harassed by someone at their school when she came to visit. The harassment didn't get that far because Yamamoto found them in time and broke the guy's hand. But after Yaku got a hold of the guy, the guy suddenly dropped out of school for some unknown reason. Lef vowed to never make Yaku that angry, and Kenma feared Yaku was going to attack him. So, he pulled out of 
Left took some time behind an unmoving left to zip up his pant to make it look believable, and afterward, left immediately pulled his pants up his heart on being gone because he wasn't at all into people watching him. He felt Yaku's searing stare on him while he looked at the ground ashamed for even doing the prank. Yaku simply waited for the other two occupants to leave the room deciding to talk to Kenma later if not at all and deal with his relationship, to deal with the person who cheated on him. Kenma why? Ugh. Kenma simply grabbed his phone and game, not making direct eye contact with his lover, soon to be ex-lover if he doesn't clear this out. Kenma turned his camera on without Kuro noticing as he walked past the man who followed behind with a desperate expression. Kitten do you not want me anymore? If it's that position you want, I'd bottom just tell me, please. I'm sorry. Kuro was begging on the verge of tears even though he was not in the wrong. His voice became distant and the door closed. Left flinched at the sound of the door clicking closed and slowly started to raise his head. He needs to tell Yako that he was doing a prank immediately. Mori don't call me. That. Yaku's voice was sharp and demanding much scarier than him being loud. I never allowed you to call me that why now do you think now is a good idea? Yaku was standing in front of him. The pressure of his presence nearly made left break down. He was so damn scared. Go on get on your knees. Yaku demanded giving him no room to disagree. The demand was only made in the bedroom when Yaku simply didn't want to get on his tippy toes to sexually touch him. Even though Lef found it very much adorable. Yak dash dot. Shut up. Lef didn't think he'd be able to explain himself, but what was a relationship without correct communication so Lef tried again. Teddy bear. Lef was finally able to say a full name, a bedroom nickname, but a name nonetheless. Yaku said he found it degrading but he loved when he moaned it or said it every once in a while. Preferably when he did good in a match and was out of everyone else earshot, ha. Huh. That was filled with sarcasm left noted gripping his uniform pants trying to make eye contact with Yako without crying. Why was he being such a crybaby at a time like this? You're disgusting, how dare you try to use that after fucking our team setter like a whore. Yako used his hand to grip his cheeks so he could make direct eye contact with him. His grip was so tight left was sure it would leave a mark. What? You fucked the first years too? Is that why they're so buddy? buddy with an uncoordinated slut like yourself. Left tried to turn his head away frightened but his head only got yanked back in place. Yaka was never like this he had the habit of hitting him every once in a while when he deserved it. Like when he lost Yaka's history book. Yet, Yaka threw degrading comments but calling him a whore and slut was a new one. What, you fucked our teachers too? Probably how your dumb ass passing. Yaka threw left on the ground, before Lef could adjust his position Yako moved to sit on top of his back. You liked being touched here. Yako's hand slid across his ass before moving it. Sucking dick. Yako yanked him by the hair aggressively in a way they did in bed. He turned Lef's head so they could make eye to eye contact using his hair to control his movement. You're nothing more than a disgusting cock warmer and outside of that nobody besides me would love you. Bang Yako slammed Lef's head against the wooden floor. Out of the Goodness of my heart to and you go and betray me like the bitch you are. Bang left's head was slammed against the floor again. Come on turn around you dumb bitch. Yaku said sitting up but Lef was yet to move too dizzy to do anything. Head being hit a little too hard. Or, are you too stupid to understand common Japanese you foreign bastard. Contrary to a lot of people in this school's belief he. Has never been to Russia a day in his life. It is annoying when someone calls him foreign. But Yaku is Yaku. So, it's, okay. Left turned on his back head slightly bleeding eyes locking with Yaku's. As tears rolled down his cheeks and his green orbs glistering. He was a pretty crier not that anybody other than his sister would know that. He began sniffling in pain. T teddy bear please I'm sorry. Yaku seemed to only listen to his full sentences when he used his nickname. It wasn't what it looked like. Yaku mocked snorting back a laugh. Do you think I'm stupid? Yaku muttered fingers tracing Lef's cheekbone running down his neck. Yaku's hand paused fingertips pressing against Lef Adams's apple causing said male to cough. His hand then went farther down to untie Lef's school tie. He let out a low hum hand slipping around Lef's throat who went pale in fear. You seem to only be good in one thing. Yaku muttered staring down at the half-Asian male before moving his hand away from him. Yaku's touch was somewhat comforting against his skin even when his nails dug into certain spots. So upon him removing his hand left let out a childish pout. Yaku simply ignored him placing a 
Gentle kiss on his cheek. It's okay just never do that again or I'll be even angrier. Yaka's voice was light and somewhat soothing softer than Lef ever heard it so he wrapped his arms around the shorter male. God, he didn't want to see an angrier Yaku. Teddy go on. Yaku mumble kissing his way down Lef's arms, expecting Lef to make another absurd excuse. His kisses started from Lef's fingertips and ended at the taller boy's shoulder. Their fingers are intertwined the entire time. Lef lightly blushed looking away as Yaku took full control of him. It was a prank. Who thought of it? Oikawa. So, what were you and Kenma doing homework? Yaku spat out sarcastically, hands gripping Lef's tighter causing Lef to try to unlink their finger but he failed miserably. Yaku sank his teeth into Lef's neck unpleased with him. It looked that way only from your point of view I got it on camera, I wasn't doing anything. I believe you. Yaku hummed out moving to place his head against Lef's chest. He brushed his fingers against his bleeding neck. He stared at his blood-covered fingers pleased. Yaku finally left a bedroom mark on me, does this mean he isn't embarrassed by me? But you'll have to make up for it. Yaku's hands slide to his hips tugging at his pants. Lef was leaping with his phone in his hand through his school's hallway. He took his phone out of his pocket that he retrieved after he left the club room and stopped the two-hour-long recording. He didn't think it was even possible to record anything that long on his phone. He then went to his notifications to look at his missed texts. In the we are each on our own one cell but together a whole entity. Group chat. Practice has been called off. Why? Kuro went offline. Just some drama that has nothing to do with us. Okay, I got it. In the bad bitch bottoms group chat. Got any progress? Lef is nearly done since it's convenient I'm doing my challenge with him. We're collabing. Lef will be editing mine and his video by himself since I helped him. Right, Lef? He's not online probably getting it down with Yaku. Getting down I thought better of you Hinata. Concerning. In Shibayama and Lef private messages. Is everything okay? Lef quickly texted them all the same thing. Everything should be good by tomorrow. Kenma then sent him a video in their private messages. Now how the hell is he going to edit this? He hopes to God Kenma and Kuro didn't have sex because he'd be damned if he had to edit a 